Welcome back to another Logic Pro how-to. In today's video, we're going to be looking at how to remove background noise. I'm going to show you a couple ways that I remove background noise in my tracks, and then I'm going to show you at the end of the video, if you want to stick around, how to completely avoid that. This shouldn't really be happening in the first place, but like anything, things happen. So here's an example of a bit of a vocal track that has a lot of background noise in it. You know, if I, I blow up the signal, you're going to see all this, this is noise, all this stuff here in between, in between, in between. And just have a quick listen. Apologies in advance for my voice. Don't give up, don't give up on me. Don't give up, don't give up on me. All the things I tried to say, tried to say. Every time I see your face, see your face. The first way to get rid of background noise and my preferred way is to just completely cut the noise out. So we have noise here. What I mean by that is literally cutting it with the scissor tool and deleting it and then going through between the vocal lines and cutting that noise out. This is the, by far the best way in my opinion because it just completely gets rid of it and then make sure to fade the ins and outs of those, uh, of those tracks. This works, but if the background noise is too much, then it might just be like shh, and it might sound too gated. So sometimes that doesn't work, unfortunately. There is a quick way to do that. You can highlight the region and go Control X. And it's going to bring up this little thing. Logic has identified all the, the vocal signals and you can set the threshold. Like, so if I increase it, it's going to set it to nothing. And if I go all the way down to zero, it's going to take away everything. So I had a, it did it around negative 30, negative 28, I think it was, which was so if I press OK here, it splits it all up for me. Look at all this. I can, you can get rid of this. Get rid of it. It thought that was a vocal signal, but it's just room noise. I can fade these out. I can get rid of this. Fade that out. You, you see what I mean, right? It's not. It's pretty self-explanatory. Cut the regions out with the background noise, and then you don't have no more background noise. If you don't have the flexibility to do that, which sometimes you don't, the noise is like in there while your instrument is playing or while your vocal is playing. I like to use a plugin. I'm going to name two plugins. So this one is the Waves NS1 plugin, which is a simple, it's just one knob, and you can increase it to reduce the background noise. This is kind of like a, it's, it's a noise suppressor, which is really just ducking down those noisy signals. So it's, it's kind of like an EQ in a way. The other group of plugins that are really good for vocals, especially, are the I isotope plugins. They have, like you can see here, breath control, connect, declick, declip, decrackle, ds, dehum, deplosive, de -re de reverb, uh, denoise. This is what we're looking for, specifically for guitars, declicks, voice denoise. I really like these, the isotope plugins for cleaning up your audio signal, specifically for, for vocals, because the style of my music, the vocals are really upfront and they need to be super clean. So getting rid of all those clicks and the background noise, I use these set of plugins. Continuing on from that, you can also use a gate plugin. Now, Logic has one, I believe, in Dyna yeah, Dynamics, gate. So noise gate. This is also a cool production tool. Um, completely side note on uh, when you don't even have background noise, you can use a noise gate, noise gate as, a, uh, as a, a cool production tool. Let's, let's not get into that. But this would essentially do pretty much what instead of like cutting away the noise it's going to look for that noise suppress it when it's there and then when you have a bigger vocal signal it's going to let that through it's kind of like it is a gate so you can have like it lets the vocal signals through and then when the vocal stops it closes that gate so if you set the threshold really low none of the vocal is playing because that gate is just completely closed now when i open that gate don't give up don't give up on me it closes it here. Don't give up. And you can see it open and close here. Watch when it plays over this, it's going to close. On me. Closed. Don't give up. Don't give up on me. If you don't want to use any of those ways, you can like open up an EQ, whether that's a Logic EQ or, or like a Pro-Q uh, EQ Fab Filter, and just like search for those signals where maybe it's, is it background noise, a low hum, where you can maybe just, you know, cut at 118 and get rid of get rid of all that low hum or is it a high frequency where you can narrow in and do something surgical again this can be challenging if you're for one if your ear is not tuned but also 
a lot of that background noise is likely overlapping with your instrument or vocal. So you're going to be killing your, your vocal and your instrument if you're taking up frequencies with the noise. So that's how to remove background noise in, in Logic or any other DAW for that matter, really. And now here's the part in the video where, where I want to talk about like how can you completely avoid this because you shouldn't really be having a lot of background noise on your home recordings unless you can't control it. This was me once I lived, well, when I was living in Berlin and I had a home studio there and I lived on the, like a street where a lot of ambulance, uh, or where the ambulance went to the hospital. So there are always sirens in my recordings and that was really hard to remove. So I just had to kind of time the recordings in between ambulance runs, which was, you couldn't really time that. So sometimes you just can't help it, but you can try to avoid it. So close your windows, wait till your, if your computer's in the same room, wait till your computer fan goes away. Like, you know, put it to sleep for a minute, then turn it back on so that you're, you can maybe get a recording in before the fans uh, turn on. If you want to completely remove that headache, remove your, if you're using a laptop, just remove it out of the room and then connect it with a long uh, Thunderbolt cable or something. Uh, Pro Studios won't have computers in the actual room. They'll be connected usually through the wall um, so there's no fans running. So you try to turn off the fans, turn off the air conditioning, tell your kids to stop screaming or like, do everything you can to physically remove noise in the, the studio you're in. A step beyond that, if you have like a, a room without any acoustic proofing, you're in a lot of like harsh reverbs and weird echoes. So just put, putting up like, like a bit of foam in a room will help your recording sound better. It's not going to really help listening. If you want to help the listening environment, you need really expensive or, well, the best way is to get really expensive acoustic treatment, like thick bass traps in the corners. And after you've done all that, you can control the, the background room noise in your environment. Then the next thing is just to record at proper gain volumes. Like if you're using a, a dy or like either a dynamic microphone or a condenser microphone, if you were really record at high gain, you're going to be collecting more noise. So like on this microphone that I'm recording my voice right now, I'm using a zoom recorder, but I, I can see right now I'm coming in at negative 16 dB. So I'm in, in post-production, then I boost up the volume. But if I was recording at, you know, negative six, it's just going to capture maybe some noise that's coming outside or, or you know, it's going to start capturing more noise. So leave yourself enough headroom that you're not collecting a, a, a lot of that um, room noise. So that's my way on how to remove background noise in Logic Pro. Let me know what you think in a comment and I hope to see you in the next video.